This is what we call Vision Weekend. So we're gonna talk about where we've been. I'm gonna give you some exciting stats of what God has done, but it's also setting us up for where we're going because vision is looking back to look ahead. And as we read the Bible, we're looking at stories of what was so we can look ahead to what will be. And throughout this year, y'all, how many of y'all have seen the hand of God move? Beautiful. How many of y'all have seen the faithfulness of God and the favor of God and the blessings of God? How many of y'all have had a little bit of a rocky year? Amen. Some hills and valleys. Torn Walls wrote that song. He is in valley. Okay, anyways. Throughout this year, we witnessed numerous extraordinary moments. We've heard countless testimonies of God's miracle working power. We've experienced his kindness. We've experienced his faithfulness as a church community. And we have stayed determined to consistently pursue his heart. If you're new to Hope City, uh, I, I love to do an anchor verse that's tied to the weekend. If you know Hope City and you're part of Hope City, you know my anchor verse, uh, love. And we're found, it's found in Habakkuk chapter two. It's on the screens. Verse two says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Say, write the vision. And make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Now, he is interchangeable. That could be you as a daughter of God. It's you as a son of God. But write it down. Have vision plain and know where we're going. Because it's a little difficult to really get to where the trajectory is of your life if you just kind of blow with the wind. The Bible specifically talks about that type of person as being double-minded, unstable. So wherever the wind blows, we're like, this is a good idea. Oh, I like this. This is a good idea. And here's the thing about Hope City, y'all. We know where we're going. We know that we're helping people find hope. We know that we're getting in the way of people's storms and romancing them to Jesus. We know that there's healing in our hands. Come on, somebody. We know that everything we put our hands to prospers. Some of y'all are like, well, that's great for a church. No, the church is you. Say, it's me. We all make up the body. Some of y'all are the awkward pinky toes, but we make up the body. See, that's not funny unless you know. You're like, that's me. <laughs> all right, the title of this weekend 2023 Vision Weekend, taking down notes, is grateful. Now, some of y'all are like, oh, okay, I see what you did there, because we are wrapping up and bringing to a close year number eight as a church. And next month, the end of January, the last weekend of January, we're stepping into our ninth year as a church. But y'all, we're grateful. Somebody say, I'm grateful. All right, let's pray. Father, give us ears to hear you. I'm coming in hot because I feel big faith in the room. I pray, God, today that you would give us ears to hear you, a heart ready to receive, a mind ready to understand. God, I thank you that we may not have all of the details, but you're giving us direction, and that's where faith kicks in, and we trust you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. A friend of mine was telling me about a story, and uh, it was really special to me. It was about a woman named Lillian Disney, the widow of Walt. Walt Disney had passed away in 1966, but on October 1st of 71, Disney World opened. How many of y'all have been to Disney World? It'll cost you about $35,000. <laughs> but on October 1st, 71, Disney's grand opening, Lillian's on the front row, and her best friend looks over at her with tears coming down her face and says, I'm so sorry, Lillian. Lillian looks at her and says, what do you mean? What are you sorry for? She said, Walt never got to see this. And Lillian looked at her and said, hey, Walt did see this. That's why we're here today. He had a right here in his heart all along. So my question for you is, what things are you seeing in your heart but God is saying to place in his hands, to trust him in the process? This is what 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says on the screens, for we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Y'all, we have massive faith here at Hope City that God is faithful to complete everything that he has started in your life, come on, in your family, in your future, here at Hope City. We have huge vision that we are going to be a church, we already are, but even more so that the reputation is that of, oh, if you wanna get your miracle, you should go to Hope City. Oh, I've heard that people just pull on the parking lot and get their miracle. I heard that if you show up and your marriage is broken, you leave with hope. We're a church that believes that healing really is in our hands. We're a church that really believes that everything we put our hand to does prosper. We're a church that believes that we can cast out demons in his name. We're a church that believes that Holy Spirit fire is filling every one of our campuses. I'm preaching better than you're responding. We believe that God is faithful. Say, my God is faithful. 
And we believe that when we really see God's vision for our church family, and we become a, this is it, a unified front, a unified church is dangerous to the enemy. Because he realizes, oh man, she's figured it out. She's more than a conqueror. Oh, he's figured it out that the one standing for him and with him is stronger than the enemy who's been standing against you. I've said this for years, and I need you to catch this. The enemy knows he can't take you out. He'll try to wear you out. How many of y'all felt tired a little bit this year? I feel, I asked my wife the other day, I said, am I aging like an American president? Like, I feel, ooh, she's like, no, nah, it's okay. You just put some more, you know, oils on your face, huh? Just put some lotions on there. Do little eye patches. <laughs> She puts those things on me and I walk like this. It's like when you put mittens on a dog's paws. So it's like. <laughs> no, but the truth is, we are in seasons where the enemy tries to needle you a little bit, tries to make you tired, tries to get you to pull back from trusting God, tries to get you to doubt what the word says about you. Say out loud, I'm a king's kid. Look at the person next to you and say, I belong to him. I'm, I, I need you to grab this today. There is vision that he has for your life, that we have access to. We just have to access it. Here's what we believe. As we've consistently been taking territory as a church this year, I asked Pastor Robert Morris in Dallas one day, I said, sir, and some of y'all know this story, but I said, when does opposition stop? And he looked at me and kind of snickered. He's like, <laughs> He's like for you and Jackie, never. I was like, this is very encouraging. I'm glad I drove to Dallas. <laughs> I think I could have just zoomed you and gotten that word. <laughs> like, zoomy. I said, what? And he goes, no, no, no. You know why? Because every morning when you wake up, you're a threat to the enemy's camp. Because every day when you wake up, the enemy knows you're, you're looking for territory. Katie, we look for buildings every day. Y'all are going to get a campus soon in Jesus' name. Come on, I believe that in Jesus' name. I believe that we're taking territory. The moment we bought 5300 right down the street, for those of you who are new to Hope City, we bought a building. It's Hope City headquarters. Our youth meet there every Wednesday. We're starting early 24 and building an almost 2,000-seat sanctuary onto that building, which will become our West Houston camp. Let's go. I feel faith. So the enemy knows, oh man, they keep taking territory every day. Every day we pray as a church that God would lead us across more people that don't know him and romance him to his heart. But if you're just kind of cowered in a corner, stuck in a rut, just feeling like the ditch is where you belong, then no, opposition isn't something you may face. But if you're facing opposition, you're in really good company. Because all throughout the Bible, the greatest men and women of faith dealt with constant op opposition. You're like, yeah, but that seems a little scary. Like, can't you be more encouraging? It's called Vision Weekend. No, it's a good thing because you're more than a conqueror. It's a good thing because you are a daughter or a son of the living God. Man, I, I pray, this is my prayer that the next service will just be a lot more rowdy. All right, here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. <laughs> Is what we believe as a church. Maybe it's the fake suede jacket. I don't know. Just feel, I'm like, I'm on fire. No, you're literally sweating, sir. I can see it. All right, here's what we believe. Write this down. It's on the screen. Number one, God is our source. Not your job. Ugh. That's the opposite of the American condition. No, but if I don't have this job, then what else? God's your source. He is more than enough to take care of every need according to his riches and glory. God is our source. Say, God is my source. Not your job. Let me say this one. Not the government. The government's not your source. Not that scratch-off lottery ticket that you get at 7-Eleven on Fridays. Like, not again. Like, no, that's not your source. God is your source. This is what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. Yet for us, there is but one God, the Father, who is the, here's the line, source of all things. And we exist for him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom all are all things that have been created. And we believers exist and have life and have been redeemed through him. God's our source. Everything you need when you need it is found in his presence. The peace you need, the fight you need, the perseverance you need, the wisdom you need, the clarity you need, the discernment you need. Some of you are like, I need that one. That's a... So you don't end up in the wrong relationship to derail what God has for you so that you don't end up stepping in unequally yoked into a business partnership with somebody who's gonna rip you off five years from now. No, 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 God is the source of everything we need when we need it, but we have to access it. 
You have access. First, first John 5, 14, I love the scripture that this is the confidence that we have when approaching God. But when approaching God is a choice. You have to make the choice to approach God, to get in his presence. My kids all walk into our presence with confidence. Why? Because they know that they belong to us. They walk in honorable and respectful, but also with a posture of sonship. That's how we have to be with the Lord. A confident approach that anything we ask according to his will, he hears this. But here's the key. God wants our total dependency in him. Because he will never give you a life where he's not necessary. So many people try to live their lives rogue. They try to, I'll bet on me. I'll just figure it out on my own. You're Googling more than you're looking up verses. You're WebMD and instead of going to the great physician. He'll never give you a life where he's not necessary. But he is the provider. Say it again. God is my source. source. Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow seed or reap a harvest or gather the crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? Look at the person next to you and say, I'm more valuable than a parakeet. I'll tell you right now. I'm telling you right now. Look at your second choice. Say, I'm not even into birds. I'll be honest. And if God takes, now we do have a couple. They'll come at 1030. They're really into birds, so I have to be careful. <laughs> They're going to be like, we're in the birds. I'm not going to say that. I was with my daughter, Daphne, and this, this illustration was perfect. This illustration was perfect. I was walking in on the sidewalk with her, and this little squirrel, it was like, I thought it was an animatronic, because he was like, like, I, was like, I don't think he's real. Anyways, he picks up a little acorn, and, and, and our kids know growing up, like, no, no, we don't eat acorns. Like, they're toxic to humans. Some of you are like, you've never tasted my acorn stew, and I don't want to. You know what I mean? Some of you supernatural people are like, uh, uh. like, anyways, this little squirrel's picking up this acorn and he's you know, eating it and dropping it and, and grabbing another one. And Daphne goes, who gave him all this food? Who, who provided it? She didn't say the word provide. I don't know how, what she said, but it was something like, where did all, this, where did all this, these acorns come from? Like She thought maybe mommy and I threw them out there. And I said, no, babe, come here, come here, come here. I said, see these trees? They fall off these trees. God is providing Food, and watch this, baby. The squirrels, they didn't pay for any of this. I pay for all, you know, I, I pay for all of them trees. And they're annoying, you step on them, you're like, I think I rolled an ankle, but the squirrel, it's like, you know, it's like lubies, like, there's, it's a golden corral. They're just excited that they have acorns on tap, like. But I was able to explain to her what Jesus was talking about, that he provides, they, know, they don't sow nor reap, how much more valuable are you? Maybe you don't feel very valuable. Maybe you feel a little overlooked and insignificant. I'm telling you, the one who shaped and molded you, Genesis 128, in his image, he sees you as valuable. Others might have forgotten your name. He knows your name. He knows who you are, the issues you struggle with, the tears that have hit your pillow. How much more valuable are you? Come on, say it out loud like you own it. Say, I'm valuable. Oh, God is our source. Number two, write this one down. Relationships sustain us. That's why we're so passionate about relationships. We believe that community matters. Not just a Sunday experience where you show up and high five a couple people and walk out, but community matters. That's why we're so passionate about our Hope City groups. Join a group. If you are not in a group and you're attempting to do life on your own, You will, if you are falling apart in life, it's so much better when you have somebody saying, hey, I got your back, man. I've been there before. Let me lift your arms. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. You know what? I'm gonna let you be a blessing and buy me dinner. Amen. Either way, like, we're passionate about Hope City Groups. We're passionate about our HC Connect. Immediately following services, you can go through HC Connect, learn more about who we are. If you're on the sidelines wondering, like, I wonder if my giftings can be used, the answer is yes. Make some noise if you're on the dream team. Come on. You know what? If you're on the dream team, stand up for a minute across all of our campuses. I just, I love to see, I want to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give, give everybody a hand that serves. It's a beautiful thing. Because some of y'all just show up and you're like, I don't know who does all this. They do. Our staff does. 
We turned gymnasiums at Katy and here at West Houston into sanctuaries on the weekends because of those who work full-time jobs and still show up and say, I want to serve. This is my acceptable service under the Lord. Everything I do, I want to do it as under the Lord. You can jump on and be a part of the dream team because we truly believe the relationships sustain us. Hebrews chapter 10, 25 says, and let us not neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Y'all, relationships sustain us. I remember, and some of y'all know this story, and I might get emotional, but if you're new to the church, maybe you've never heard it before, but I remember Brecken and Finley, and in between our Daphne, who's seven now, and Foxman, who's four, we had a miscarriage, and it was devastating. Some of y'all know the story, and I've told the story before, and I typically get pretty emotional about it, but I remember the day that she actually went into an emergency moment. Our friend, Pastor Desiree, was with us and their family, and we were watching their daughter's sixth grade Peter Pan play, and they took like four intermissions. I'm like, these kids don't even know their lines, and we're... <laughs> Another intermission. I'm like, they don't even have good food. Like, I'm trying to figure this out, whole thing out. Anyways, we're there, and like, it went from zero to 100 like that, where we were rushing out to the car to rush to the ER because she was hemorrhaging. And if we would have wasted any more than a few moments, the doctor said she wouldn't have made it. But on the way out, because relationships sustain us, I remember yelling across the gym to this girl named Ashley Wilcox, who's our children's director at Katie. And I remember yelling across the gym, Ashley, we need you, can you come? Because she'd watched our kids before. We had been in relationship with their family and she jumped in, no questions asked, and took care of our kids. And Pastor Desiree was there, Pastor Matt was there. and our, We had relationships that in an emergency, low place moment, were there to lift our hands and say, look at me, it's gonna be okay. God is gonna be faithful in the middle of this, even when I felt like my faith was wavering a little bit. How many are grateful for relationships that help you when your faith is wavering a little bit? I can't stress this enough, don't do life alone. The enemy loves isolation. He wants you to fall back into the brokenness that you were rescued from, the areas you were once held captive in, the areas where you used to self-medicate, and find your answer in the bottle of a bottle. Some of y'all are like, I've never drank in my life. Whatever your situation is. But don't do life alone. These sticky statements that we read on Instagram, like, brother, we're better together. I'm proof of it. We're proof of it. When the doctor looked at us and said, where did you go? Did you go home first? Did you do this? We said, no, we came straight here. They said, because seconds and minutes matter right now. I was grateful that we had relationships that we could call on, that sustained us in a crazy emergency situation. And now my girl's sitting on the front row, and all is well. Woo. All right, number three, write this one down. Attitude creates opportunities. These are all tied into vision. God is our source. We're passionate about relationships. Attitude creates opportunities. Some of y'all know my story a couple years ago. So we're not big campers. Like, I'm more of a glamper. Like, if the air's not working, I'm like, I'm not doing this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> like, anyways, we bought a pull behind camper, and we were excited to go down to the beautiful, beautiful water and beaches of Galveston. See how I'm prophesying that? Like, don't step on that needle right there. But anyways. Anyways. Too far? Okay. So we park our camper down there. Well, we're parked at a storage unit, you know, and I grabbed Finley with him. I said, hey, let's go pick up the camper. We're gonna swing by. Mama threw everything in it, and we're gonna go. So she was excited, and uh, some of y'all know this story, but for those of you who don't remember it or you're new, I'm pulling out the camper, and I, this guy comes rolling through the storage area a little too fast, and he startles me, and I, I turn a little too tight, and I end up jackknifing the trailer into a pole, and it opened it up like a can opener. Like the whole back opened up and our bed was back there. My clothes were like, hello. Like it was just all right there. And Finley's looking at me and I get out and I, I'm serious, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm internally losing it. Says, you can't duct tape this thing. Like this is not super gluable back together. And I take my hat and I slam it against the camper. And I'm like, great. Great. 
And right after that, I pick my hat up and I put it back on. She walks around the corner. I was like, hey, babe, praise the Lord. (laughs) Okay, praise God. Um, And then this couple gets out and they walk over and they're like, hey, wow, are you okay? I'm like, we're good, we're good. Everything's gonna be fine. Yeah, everything's gonna be (laughs) fine. And and we start talking and towards the end of this moment, thank God they didn't see the uh, the overreaction of the hat moment. But at the end, the guy said, hey, man, you handled that really well. And I said, thank you, sir. We created like a handshake. <laughs> it was a whole deal. And he goes, you know why it matters? He said, because your daughter was watching the whole time. And she didn't see the hat moment, all right? Let's just, that was a low moment for me, but then we, turned, we shifted the narrative, amen. But here's the truth. My attitude created an opportunity for me to end up ministering to this couple. He said, man, just the way you guys handled this whole moment, we had a crew come out. They had to like, they had to like rubber strap the thing back on. They put it on a truck and drove off. And we were just like, <laughs> oh, praise God, right? But it ended up causing us, gave us an opportunity to pray for this couple, invite them to Hope City. They ended up at our KD campus. Like, watch how your attitude shifts and changes the atmosphere and it changes people's lives and can cause an impact. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Your attitude creates opportunities for you. I woke up on Thanksgiving. This is real. Woke up on Thanksgiving, and you know, we should have just been real thankful. I woke up kind of feeling heavy, and some of you are like, no, that's because you ate six pounds of turkey. Like, and heaviness runs, heaviness runs in my family because nobody runs in my family. So I was like, I just woke up like ready to go. And so I'm, I'm, eat, I'm eating too much, but that heaviness I'm talking about was not because I was eating too much. There's a scripture in Isaiah 61.3 that talks about the spirit of heaviness. Y'all ever heard about this? Have you ever woke up like that? Like we just, well, it's, it's Monday. No, no, you wake up like feeling like, ah, oh, like overwhelmed and frustrated, almost like a wet blanket is trying to smother out your fire. I woke up with a spirit of heaviness. My, my wife and my daughter, Finley, they had cooked for like 16 hours and it was my time to do the turkey. And she's like, you need to do a turkey. I was like, I don't want to. We'll do a tofurkey for all you vegans. It's like fake turkey. Anyways, praise God. So I went in my bedroom, I said, I need a minute. And I went to my bedroom and I did what the Bible says in Isaiah 61, three. It says to come into his presence, Psalms 95, two, says enter his gates with thanksgiving. But Isaiah 61, three talks about what combats the spirit of heaviness is an attitude of worship. It's a posture and a heart of worship. So I literally fell on my knees and I began to talk about all the good things. Not the stressful things, not the things that were burden-filled, not the bills and all the stuff, but I started redirecting my conversation to a posture of gratitude. And this is what Paul says in Philippians, if you're new to the Bible, Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, worthy of respect, whatever is right and Confirmed by God's word. Confirmed by God's word is what God says about you. He knows your beginning and your end. There is a trajectory that's confirmed by God's word. Whatever is pure, whatever is wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of a good report. If there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your minds on them and implant them in your heart because the truth is, when I shifted my attitude, it shifted the atmosphere. I walked back out into the living room and she's like, he's good, guys. And the kids were like, what's up, dad? Like, but earlier I was like, no, don't talk to me. Like, leave me alone. Some of you are like, you're allowed to do that as clergy? Come on, y'all, I'm still human. <laughs> gratitude, I love this. Gratitude can transform common days into Thanksgiving, turn routine jobs into joy, and change ordinary opportunities into blessings. Your attitude creates opportunities. So look at the person next to you and say, it's time to have a 
an attitude of gratitude. Mess that up. Look at your second choice to say it's time to have an attitude of gratitude. Come on, give God praise. I feel good about that. Say amen. Long story short, we had ridiculous favor where we towed the camper to, and they ended up swapping us out the same day. We got a new camper for no more money. God is super good. It was an amazing time. Anyways, some of you are like, what happened to the camper? There it is. Okay, next one. Trials are our teacher. Trials are a teacher. Charles Spurgeon says, trials teach us what we are. They dig up the soil and let us see what we're made of. Man, that's so good. Trials teach us what we are, they dig up the soil and let us see what we're made of. Romans chapter five, verses three, four, five says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us, what do they help us do? Develop endurance. Verse four, endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. I love this quote. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Pastor Stephen Furtick said something so eloquent. He says, your limping today will teach you to lean tomorrow. You're limping today, but make sure what you're leaning on can hold you. That's why we have to lean on Jesus because our humanity ends up leaning on things that can't hold us up. So we have to lean on Jesus. Trials are a teacher. If we're gonna go through it, I'm telling y'all, we have to choose to grow through it. We haven't always passed that test with flying colors. Whether it's a fallen world situation, an attack of the enemy, or a a divine difficulty, what we believe is that trials can be a teacher. And when we learn from it five years from now, when the enemy tries to mess with you again and you're like, wait a minute, devil, you tried that trick in 2018. And look what the Lord did then. And I know he'll get me through it again. Come on, somebody say amen. All right, experiences. You can clap. It's okay, I appreciate it. Amen. I write this one down. Experiences expand us or experiences grow us. Experiences expand us. Habakkuk chapter three, this dear brother Habakkuk is a prophet Towards the end of the chapter, he's going through a lot. And this is what it says, though. He says, I have heard all about you, Lord. I love this verse. I'm filled with awe by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, he wrote this obviously in a low place. Help us again as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember your mercy. Because we serve a God of the Old Testament and the New Testament. We serve a God who knows that we're gonna walk through life, make some poor choices, and have consequences that follow. And so Habakkuk's like, hey, Lord, even in the midst of your frustration, like a father to a daughter or a dad to a son, have mercy. How do, ex- how do experiences expand us? Well, number one, they expand your faith. They expand your, confident in, your confidence in God's provisions and your security in his loving kindness. Because when you trust God in every season, you will bear Fruit. Psalms 1 verse 3 says, that person, say me, me, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in seasons and whose leaf does not wither and whatever they do prospers. Come on, say whatever I do whatever. prospers. Even if you don't see it yet, stay faithful to the heart of God, stay faithful to who he is and recognize who you are in him and you will bear Fruit. All right, write this one down. Faith this is part of our vision, y'all, who we are as Hope City. Y'all, faith is our foundation. Everything we build upon is built on faith. The answer begins with and ends with Jesus. We say that all the time. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I gave you a house, if I said, hey, I want to bless you with a house. Some of you are like, is that happening? No, this is just an illustration. But if I gave you a house and I said, this house is beautiful, it's four bedrooms, it's nine bathrooms. You're like, why? I'm like, just because we're going to put a bunch of extra bathrooms, okay? It has everything you need, okay? It's a beautiful house. Oh, oh, one caveat. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. Um, we didn't build it um, on a slab. We just built it on some sand. Yeah, it changes a little bit. You're like, I'm all in for this house. Now, some of y'all would be like, I'll work it out. I'll figure that out. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> you can give me the house still. No, but if I gave you a house that was just built on sand, when the storms rise up, thank God we dodged hurricane season. Make some noise. Man, that was actually like a... Even though our Hope City Missions team was, we had hope on demand ready. We did. We were ready to go. But when storms come or in the future, uh, a hurricane or hurricane-style tropical winds come, that house would fall down because every house needs a foundation. A simple slab of concrete, which is sturdy and level to support it. The same goes for our lives. You can't build a healthy marriage. You can't build a healthy family, healthy children, or an atmosphere of joy and peace without a firm foundation. You might have it for a while, but then you realize, I built this relationship on lust, not faith. I built this family on comparison traps, and I tried to make this all work out instead of building it on faith. Y'all, husbands, dads, moms, future parents, start now and build your relationship with God on the foundation of faith every night. I love this so much. Our, our four-year-old got up. He's like sleepwalking the other day. And he went into our oldest son's room, climbed his ladder to his bunk bed, which was a little scary, but he did it while he was asleep. And he woke up his older brother and asked him if he could turn back on worship music because it had turned off. The timer had gone off. In our house, when we tuck him in, we turn on worship music that fills the entire house. You are more than able. It's filling our house. Why? Because our house is built on the rock. Our house is built on the foundation of Jesus. We choose to build our lives on faith. So when trials and tribulations come, we can see that expectation can rise because experiences expand us. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, be on guard, stand firm in the faith. That's your foundation. Be courageous and be strong. Look at the person next to you and say, we're getting stronger this weekend. I can feel it. All right, next one. I'm running a gunner. Next one. Unfailing love follows us. Oof, I'm so grateful. How many of y'all are grateful for the unfailing love of Jesus? <laughs> Psalms 23, 6 says it this way. It says, surely your goodness and mercy and your unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. We were driving the other day and I've got story. I feel like God just lets me be a part of these stories to tell you things. Um, we were driving the other day, and I stopped like you're supposed to do, Houston drivers. The courtes the courtesy thing is you stop and you let the person that's trying to pull out, you know, the like the H E B. You're like, go ahead, but only one person. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that one person. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not. This is not. I'm opening the door for 19 of you. I did it for the lady in the minivan. Like, come on out. Like, so we, we let this girl out and she pulls out. And the way she pulls out, she startles this guy in a Silverado. He panics and slams on his brakes. And there was another Houston driver, you know who you are, driving a Burgundy Camry and she plowed into the back of his truck. I mean, the whole front end of her car fell off. His Silverado was jacked up. And the girl who pulled out, it wasn't her fault. It just startled him. Some of you are like, that's wild. I need you to hear this. This may be a terrible analogy, and I may skip at the next service. But driving in Houston, where everyone tailgates you so close that you think the person's in the back seat. They're like, oh my, how'd you get in my car? <laughs> Objects and mirror closer than they appear. You're like, I think they're in my car with me. Life gets tricky. Watch this. When life gets tricky and your faith begins to falter, and you slam on your brakes because of a diagnosis or a situation, I need you to know that's when goodness and mercy <laughs> comes crashing into you like a burgundy Camry. Come on. <laughs> because the goodness and mercy of God is following you that close. Look, look at the person next to you and say, you're about to get tailgated by God's love. Come on, let them know. I may not say it next service, but I enjoyed it. Okay. His unfailing love is following us. You need him that close when you're in the middle of a low place. I'm so grateful that he's just one mention of his name away from being right there again. You've called on so many others. You've tried so many other uh, uh, opportunities and tried to fix it in your own strength. But thank God for his goodness and his love. Thank God that his mercies, Lamentations chapter three, are new every single morning. How many of y'all are grateful that you woke up again today and his mercies were new? So. 
All right, the last one. I want you to write this down. Smile real big, like big, big smile. Like, even if you don't feel like it, come on. They talk about when you forcibly smile, it releases like dopamine and, and all these endorphins in your body. It actually, when you force a smile, you look in the mirror and you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get through this day. Let's do this. <laughs> like, when you put that joy on, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says laughter. Write this one down. Laughter is a medicine. Laughter is our medicine. It's time to get your joy back. Some of y'all lost it around May of this year. Some of y'all used to have a laugh so contagious, people knew when you walked in the room, like, oh, that, that, that's Lindsay. Like, stay away from her. She will laugh so much. Now it's time to get our joy back. I'm determined for our church family to close out this year with our joy back. Proverbs 17, so you don't just think it's my opinion that laughter is like a medicine. It says a cheerful heart is good medicine. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. You ever been around somebody that's real sappy? Like, huh. It's a Thursday. I mean, like, you said that about Monday. I'm like, no, oh, but tomorrow's Friday. And then Saturday, and then the weekend's over, and I get started all over again on Monday. I'm like, I don't even like the way you say Monday. It's so weird. We have a friend who spent a lot of time at MD Anderson this uh, last couple of years, but specifically two years ago, and she went through a crazy cancer diagnosis. And the thing that set her apart from all the other people in that waiting room were people didn't think that she was there as a patient. They thought she was there as an advocate, somebody in the room just to encourage everybody else. Because even though she was going through literal hell on earth, she was sitting in this room, and in between treatments, she would get up and say, I would look in the mirror and say, God, I can't do this in my own strength. So give me joy today that becomes my strength. So the other patients were gravitating towards her and her husband. My friend Rodney over here went through a similar situation. Not Rodney on the worship, another friend named Rodney. Not all Rodneys are the same, okay? <laughs> he can't sing. Okay, sorry, Rodney, I love you. We're not giving you a microphone. I'm being honest. I love you too much to lie to you publicly in front of all of our family. But I remember all of the, how many treatments did you go through? 45 treatments. And he would still show up. He's in my group. Oh, yeah, by the way, we don't just talk about groups. I lead one. Let's go. It's time for you to lead a group. Amen. But he had more joy than the majority of the people that would show up that were completely 100% uh, healthy. And you know what? Not only did he get through it, but he got on the other side of it, and he's alive to tell about it. Let's go. And I'll be honest. He had a cheerful heart. And I'm sure there was low place moments but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. And sometimes we have to choose to laugh about things that could ruin a moment. Anytime <laughs> Pastor Jack and I are out on a date, there's always something, right? And uh, one day, and some of y'all will know this story, but we went on a date and I went in the bathroom and I was washing my hands and some of the old school little spritzers, they don't make any, they don't let you know it's coming. It's just like, oh, what's that? But the new high tech ones are like, beep, 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 like, eh. So I'm washing my hands and I hear it go, bip, 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 bip. and like the soap's like delayed. It's like, wing, 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 wing. and, it's, and it gets, and it floated down. It coated my head, coated my teeth. It's in my beard. I can't get anything out of this beard. And I was like, oh no, like I like this shirt. Like this is awful. And I walk out and I'm trying to play it cool. And I sit down. She's mid conversation like him. So, babe, do you smell that? And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, did you step in something on the way to the, what is that smell? It smells like, it smells like you stepped in something in a weird garden. I'm like, I, I don't, I, it was the thing and I don't know what they're called. So I was like, and she's like, I don't know what you're saying, but we will, I'm getting a headache. Like we're literally getting a headache. Like even the smell of the restaurant could not overshadow. Like the waiter came, I was like, can I get you guys anything? It's like, it's. It's me, and clearly these are now disposable clothes. <laughs> to continue the date, we had to go and buy more clothes. Y'all, it's amazing what clothes you can find when you have a budget of $4, like <laughs> Dollar Tree. I'm like, I'll put this on. No, but the thing was, we decided to turn lemons into lemonade. We didn't cancel our date. We actually made a memorable moment out of it. We chose to choose laughter. And you know, we laugh and we laugh and we talk about it. She didn't make me change. 
But we laughed about it, we had stories to tell, and I just told you all the story because the truth is laughter is a medicine. It doesn't mean you're always gonna do everything right, but I'm telling you, if you will choose joy, not happiness, you can create happiness moments, but if you will open up your hands before the Lord and say, I choose to receive your joy knowing that it ultimately will be my strength. Somebody just put on a fake laugh, just laugh a minute. That's pretty good. Be like a television, live television. I actually had a clip I was going to play, so, <laughs> and then it was done. But I thought that was creepy, so I wanted you to do it. Okay. All right, recap. God is our source. Relationships sustain us. Attitude creates opportunities. Trials are a teacher. Expectations expand and grow us. Faith is our foundation. Unfailing love follows us, and laughter is our medicine. Y'all, our posture is grateful. Our entire foundation as a church is we are a grateful church. We're grateful that we have the opportunity to make the impact we're making in our city from neighborhoods to nations. We're grateful that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. We're grateful that Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 is something that we can stand on, that we're the salt of the earth that we're a light, a city on a hill. We're a grateful church. Somebody say out loud, we're grateful. Come on. Let me give you a quick snapshot. Throughout this year, we've seen God do some incredible things and move in some amazing ways. You're gonna wanna shout in just a moment. When it comes to Hope City Kids, here's an update. We dedicated and prayed for over 300 babies and toddlers this year during our child dedications. Come on. For those of you who are parents, we expanded our preschool classroom space to support a sizable influx of our preschool age children in attendance that we've experienced this year. For elementary students who said yes to Jesus, we've launched weekly connect groups to help them grow in their faith. Parents, we integrated a parent queue, an app that allows us to partner with parents, allowing them to easily access what the kids are learning each week. And through parent queue, we're able to provide parents with weekly digital activities to lead their children deeper and life-giving biblical topics throughout the week. Let's go. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, close to a 1,000 kids come and are a part of our multiple campuses every single week for our youth. Come on, make some noise, young people. They're not in this service. They'll be in the later ones. Okay, for our youth, we launched HC Breakouts. It's an initiative to fight the loneliness epidemic among youth and create life-giving spaces every Wednesday for our community to take place. We place major resource behind our HCY Hope City Youth block parties. Come on, creating space for youth to bring their friends, find an energizing, uplifting, and Christ-centered environment that meets every Wednesday night, by the way, at our Hope City headquarters. Katie has a group. We also meet at our Woodlands campus. So if you have a junior high to high school age student, we meet every Wednesday. So tell them, you need to tell them, like, it's not an option. I'm dropping you off. Amen. <laughs> Through our HC groups, make some noise, HC groups. Come on. We had over 185 gatherings. We had over 2,200 people regularly doing life together each week. That's massive, y'all. And I said it earlier, we've seen over 1,000 participants and team attend Freedom Encounter this year. Make some noise, again, if you went through Freedom. And a part of our member care initiative, we've trained 18 new leaders across three campuses for the upcoming launch of our HC uh, care ministry, enabling us to better care for those in our community and need free biblical and spiritual care. That's amazing. We also formed something brand new this year called Major Life Events Department. Pastors Andy and Cindy Lee are leading and allowing us to serve our community and walk through the highs and the lows of life. So our Major Life Events Ministry is gonna help those in low places and also celebrate moments moments of victory. Through our investment, this is huge, in Hope City Missions, we completed over 100 mission projects, thanks to you. We had 5,569 volunteers serve. Come on. And Pastor Brandon said it earlier, we packed and served over a million meals. Y'all, a million. M-I-L-L-I-O-N. In July, we also launched a new outreach initiative called Days of Hope. Instead of just one day, of the week, we dedicated an entire month. And during the Days of Hope uh, this year, we saw 22,188 people, children, and families in need helped. Come on, that's phenomenal. 
We were able to provide 82,857 meals because of your generosity. Come on. Medical, date was, day, uh, medical debt was paid off. Vehicles were repaired uh, for single parents. We also helped repair and supply furnishings for an entire home for women in recovery. That was massive. And we had, and maybe you're one of these, we had over 600 new volunteers sign up and serve for the very first time ever at Hope City. Another one of our mission initiatives that we do, we do uh, global mission trips, but we also do local things through prison ministry. We impacted 30,576 prisoners in services that we do in prisons. That's huge. And y'all, already this year, we saw 15,013 salvations, 15,000 salvations in prison, 753 baptisms, and combined between our prison baptisms and our campuses across everywhere, we've seen over 1,200 baptisms take place. That's huge. 49 baptisms just last night at Freedom. That was, a mass, that was massive. Pastor Jackie this year launched the W Collective Women's Ministry. And before I give those details, the W Bible Study, because we're talking about the prison ministry as well, the W Bible Study is now in women prisons all over the nation. And I got an update last night. Y'all ready for this? 68,970 women in prison have already watched and participated in the W Collective Bible Study. Y'all, that is massive. We also did fall festivals, family movie nights. We hosted our second annual all Spanish worship night. Thanks to Reina and your vision for that as well. We saw record numbers in attendance at our Easter this year. We hosted our Hope City worship nights. We were beyond capacity in all of those. We're in our final mix and mastering phase of our live recording, y'all, which is gonna be releasing very soon. Hope City Worship is about to drop, come on. And I'm super fired up about this one. This last week, we officially established our Hope Center at Hope City. Our Hope Center is a hope-filled hub here in our community that's going to be what we do all of our disaster relief, all of our back-to-school programs, all of our missions through. The Hope Center is going to be a distribution hub to reach churches and communities, and, 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 and it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. I'll give you more information about that as we unpack it. We also had our second annual men's night. Let's go. And our first ever men's retreat, if you made it to that, it was phenomenal. We had 1,700 women show up, uh, over 1,700 show up for Pastor Jackie's W Collective Night in October. And y'all, we're just beginning. This is phenomenal. Next year, I believe the W Collective Nights, the brunches, by the way, the brunch is coming up next year, ladies, and you're going to want to register. It's going to be phenomenal. And the Bible study is going to be incredible. And I said this earlier, but we are in the final detailed design, architectural final touches of our new state-of-the-art, almost 2,000 seat sanctuary that's gonna be a, a breaking ground first part of 2024. That's huge, y'all. Do you see what God is doing here? Y'all, God is building his church. And this is the one that makes me most excited. Every day our staff walks into our headquarters. This is what they see. They see this when they walk in. Can we put it up? 37 111 commitments to Jesus just this year because we want to keep the vision in front of us. So when our dream team and our youth leaders walk in, they see 3,711 people, and there's going to be so many more that we add to that board every Monday from our weekend experiences. For those of you who give, thank you. For those of you who show up and serve, thank you. For those of you who call Hope City home, and this isn't just a blip on the radar, but you're digging your, your heels in because you really do believe that blessed is the man or woman who is planted in the house of the Lord. Can you shout, God did it? Come on. So this weekend for Vision Weekend, we do something every year. There was a card on your seat in an envelope. And I'm not gonna make this awkward or clunky. I just wanna cast a little vision around this. We're a grateful church. Everything we do, from loading in to setting up to tearing down every week, like a NASCAR pit crew, the resources in our budget every year go to the missions initiatives, but it also goes to putting on our worship experiences and our Hope City services every week. On your seat was a card. We do an annual uh, end of year offering called Hope for the House. And our Hope for the House offering, when we participate, gives hope from the house. It gives hope to our city. And through our next generation ministries from kids all the way to youth, it gives hope for a future. And we believe that as we close out 2023 strong, it also sets us up for 2024 
with a foundation to go into next year with greater faith and audacious faith. We never ask for a specific amount for our end of year hope for the house offering. We just ask that you would do these three things. Pray, ask the Lord, what would you have me do? And this is the third one. Simply obey and follow through on whatever the Lord is asking. Because what we truly believe in our hope for the house offering is as we step into this moment of faith, that God is gonna show up and he's gonna pour out his spirit on every single one of us. Here's what our prayer is, because we all can't do everything, but we can all do something. My prayer, my big faith is that we would have 100% participation. You know, I asked our CFO one day, I said, what is our, what is our smallest recurring gift a month? It's 59 cents. 59 cents. The person who has established that, maybe you're in the room, the impact of 59 cents is like the widow's might. And God sees that big faith. And when we all together, because of the thousands of people that come every single week across all of our campuses, the impact is significant. So our hope for the house offering, this is our prayer. You can give today, hopecity.com slash give. You can walk out today and put it in a bucket or one of our giving stations. But here's what I would love as well. You can take the card and the envelope with you. And the next week on the 10th, when we start Journey to Joy, we're all gonna come together and link our faith together as a church family across all of our campuses, and we're gonna bring our best gift. Pastor Jackie and I are praying. We did it last year, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna give our best gift, and we're gonna make, I believe, a significant impact. And some of y'all are like, yeah, but it's a mega church, right? There's probably more than enough money. 30% of nonprofit and church's income to make all of this happen comes in between November and December. So the end of the year is significant so that we can close out strong, continue to fund the 1.1 million, 1.2 million that we do in missions, continue to reach people far from God, continue to put on experiences like this every week because we're a grateful church. Come on, somebody say out loud, I'm grateful. Can we give God praise? Come on. Now for tax purposes, you still can get your offering in anytime this month, as long as it's post dated by the 31st. This is what the Bible says in Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it will be given to you a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. We believe that we're gonna continue to see the hand of God move as we close out 23. And with audacious faith, we're gonna step into 24 in, I believe, supernatural awe of what he does. Because y'all, God has a reputation about doing himself. I'm gonna invite my beautiful wife to the stage. I know we're running a little bit long, but can you give her a hand as she comes? Come on. I told her, I said, I, I saw us cha uh, closing out this service a little, a little different. I kind of saw, for those of you who have been with us the past two years and have walked through the transition that we've experienced as a church, we started just like this. And the statement was, we're here. Y'all remember that day? For those of you who were in the room, we said we're here for you. And you can see us out in the lobby every week. But today we wanna say how grateful we are for you. If you call us your pastors and you call Hope City home, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this incredible, diverse, beautiful community of believers. Thank you. And by the way, that wasn't a plant. <laughs> Somebody like he. I don't know where it came from. All right. <laughs> I've sat through the majority of this service and tried to keep this makeup on my face, but it has not been very successful. So when you hug me afterwards, don't judge my face, please. <laughs> we are. I will hop in there. Um, we are so grateful for you all. We invest our heart and soul here. Um, our children do because we sincerely love each and every one of you, even if we've never met you. Um, it is biblically the heart of a shepherd and that has always been our heart. And we are so grateful every single day for what God is able to do in this house yeah. and through this house because truly this house is helping people find hope. Yeah. And when it starts with hope, 
There is nothing that cannot be done by the grace and the power of Jesus. Yes. And Can we whether... also make some noise? We're grateful for our staff, our programming team, our production team, Hope City Worship, our kids' ministry, youth, every single person, the people that make coffee for you, set up these chairs, the dream team. Yeah. We're just so grateful because it takes an army, it really does, yeah. to make this work. So thank you for whatever season you're in, for just being a part of the church, because you make it better. Even if you come in here and you're the one needing desperate hope every day, you make the house of God better yeah. because you find healing in the house. And then when you carry the healing of Jesus, you make the person that you sit next to better. You are on a journey. We don't expect you to be perfect today. We don't expect you to be perfect tomorrow, but I promise you, we will stand with you yes. in your journey of faith. Yes. And we will see God do a miracle in your life. Let's go. For all the single mamas who wake up on Sundays, and get your babies dressed. And you show up to church, thank you all the dads who show up and recognize the importance statistically of being a mighty man of valor for your family. Thanks for making this a priority. Yeah. For all the young people with the energy to help us run and run fast, thank you for serving. And all the older folks yep. that have the wisdom to stand and say, hey, let's, let's fund this and sow into this and be a part of this. Thank you. Yeah. Every single one of you are significant to us. She said a moment ago, even if we haven't met you, we have people watching all over the world We've got little people in, in Katy and in Woodlands who show up every week and watch us on a screen. We wanna tell you thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, what I preach today is not just something that's catchy and put on a screen. We are grateful pastors for everything that you are to us. So one more time, give yourselves a hand. We love you. We love you. We don't close. We don't close services flippantly. We believe that every single opportunity we have to give somebody an opportunity to know Jesus is the most significant part of the service. With every eye closed, really quickly, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, but today you want to, if you would say, I've been living in a pretty broken condition, but today I found hope. I felt the Spirit of God in the room. Again, this isn't a church of visitation. We believe it's a church of habitation. So right now, if you wanna know Jesus as your Savior, you wanna rededicate your life, maybe you've fallen away and you're like, today I need to rededicate my life. I've fallen away, but today I wanna come back home and fall in his arms. I'm gonna to count to three, and if that's you, would you lift up your hand across every campus, watching online, one, two, three, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. I wanna give my life to Jesus. I see you, my friend. I see you over there. Come on, I see you, my friend, and I see you, my friend. I wanna give my life to Jesus today. I'm grateful for the price that he paid. I saw you back there. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Say it out loud. Say, Jesus, it's me. I'm grateful for the price you paid on the cross. You exchanged your life for mine, even though I didn't deserve it. You did it because you said I was worth it. I repent for all my issues, all my sins. Here's all my shame. Here's all my struggle. I ask for your forgiveness. And from this moment on, I'm choosing to live for you. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, make some noise, Hope City.